meeting approach. Hybrid board meetings allow people to join online through WebEx or in person at the city and county building. Although masks are no longer required in, ci in city facilities, any attendees should feel comfortable to continue using them. We will continue to monitor the situation and take any reasonable precautions for the public and staff. Thank you. Um, we have two RDA meetings set for this month. Tonight will be regular RDA business, and next week we will meet specifically about the RDA's annual budget. For the budget, we also have set two hearing dates, May 17th and June 7th, both at 7 p.m. Please join us then to provide comments on the annual budget. We're moving on to our first agenda item. Uh, which is item A. We start our RDA meetings with comments to the board. Your feedback is always welcomed, and you can share um, that with the board anytime by mailing the council office at P.O. Box 145476, Salt Lake City, Utah 84114, or emailing us at council.comments at slcgov.com, or by calling our 24-hour phone comment line at 801-535-7654. We are accepting your comments in person and through WebEx. And for those whose only option is to call in, staff will be, will be monitoring a separate telephone line. I want to mention our rules of the quorum. These are guidelines to help our meeting progress in an orderly, civil, efficient way and want to give everyone the opportunity to voice their opinions without feeling intimidated. In order to achieve this, our rules of the quorum begin from the moment you arrive in person or into our virtual meeting. The RDA board respects all points of view and we welcome new insights. Please be respectful. Avoid yelling, profanity, or making racial slurs, obscene, or defamatory remarks. If you violate this rule, your line will be muted or you will be asked to stop. If you feel you need to use profanity or disrespectful remarks to express your point, you're welcome to email board members or call our comment line. In addition, our staff will request your name during the WebEx registration process. To limit disruption, your name cannot include a message of, or violate our rules of the quorum. If your name doesn't meet this requirement, then our staff will make contact with you to gather that information from you. For those joining WebEx, please monitor your chat in case we try to reach you. Scott Corpani from our staff is helping to moderate the meeting and will be messaging with the attendees to coordinate on any questions with your commenting registration. Staff is handling a number of tasks. Please limit messages to technical issues and minimal changes to your registration. Taylor Hill and our staff will be calling the names of those who wish to comment. We will call names of people joining on WebEx and in person based on the order of registration or received comment cards. When it is your turn to speak, Taylor will announce your name. For people in WebEx, she will unmute your line and you may begin. For people in person, please step up to the podium right there. And if you have a mask, please feel free to remove before making a comment. Once you begin, please state your name and the two minute timer will start. We will now open our general comment period. Taylor, please start with our first comment. Board Chair, it looks like there are two people here for general comment. Um, the first is George Chapman, followed by Maximilian Korath. George, you're now unmuted. Okay, I assume you can hear me now, right? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Can it? Oh, good. Okay, I'm George Chapman, and I want to argue against the $1.7 million loan that you're going to consider this afternoon to uh, the Bicycle Collective to build a new headquarters and shop. Ballpark needs a park with a playground more than a Bicycle Collective headquarters. The EMT building could be, should be converted to a library and adjacent playground for kids with that money. It's a better use than giving money for an eye candy building. The Bicycle Collective is a great organization, but the area needs a park and library now instead of waiting for a decade, which it looks like Salt Lake City thinks it's gonna take a decade to get a park and a real library there. 
So, but you can do it almost immediately if you use the 1.7 million to help convert a building or the EMT building to a library and make a, an adjacent playground. So if Salt Lake City RDA has a couple of million to give, it should be given to the community, not just one entity. No matter how good the entity is, it should be given to the community. And the library and playground can encourage development of the area much more than giving it to the bicycle collective. Those are my comments and thank you for listening. And it looks like Maximilian has left the meeting, so that was our only comment. Thank you, Taylor. Uh, do we have anybody in the public that would like to speak? I don't see anyone. We don't have any cards, right? Okay. All right. Thank you to everybody who provided those comments, meaning George. Are there any comments? <laughs> I don't think any other comments, so we're moving on to item C1. And we don't have a public hearing. Um, we have um, item C1, approval of minutes. And we would like, I would like a motion to approve the, meet, the meeting minutes of September 14th, 2021. Madam Board Chair. Uh-huh, go I ahead. I move that the board approves the minutes from September 14th, 2021. Second. All right, I have a motion by Board Member Pui and seconded by Board Member Dugan, do we have any discussion? All right, I'm going to roll call. Fowler? Yes. Wharton? Yes. Pui? Yes. Uh, Mano? Yes. Dugan? Yes. Petro? Yes. And Ame? Yes. So thank you. Uh, we're moving on to item C2, which is a resolution uh, for the bicycle collective loan. We'll receive a briefing. Um, uh, about and consider adopting a resolution that would approve a 1.75 million loan request from this group to fund construction of the nonprofit's headquarters. And that's at 901 South Gale Street. At the table, we have Danny Walls and Tracy Tran of the RDA. And we also have the applicants available for questions. Yes. One of the. Thank you so much. Sorry, Tracy, just really quick. Um, one of the attendees that had signed up to comment is now back in the meeting. Oh, okay. um, I don't know if there were technical difficulties. Maybe, Taylor, can you call and see if Maximilian would still like to comment? Yeah, Maximilian, I'm going to unmute you now. Can you comment? Okay. okay, you're unmuted. So then on the north, it's a similar situation, but we have a lot more space to work. Madam Chair, if I may. Yeah, go ahead. Maximilian is here to speak to this. You're not, you're unmuted. I mean, sorry, muted. I would assume Maximilian is here to speak on behalf of this loan since he is the developer and not public commentator. Okay. So. All right. Thanks. Uh, Max, stay tuned then. Um, so then we are actually moving on with item C2, Tracy and Danny. And then we have the applicants, Donna McAleer. Todd Reader and Sean, Sean Murphy. We'll turn it over to Tracy, who has a. I'm sorry, Danny. You have a microphone that requires a button. That off. Sorry. Yeah, that I'll one... turn it over to Tracy, who I believe has a presentation. If you'll just move to the next mic, that one will remain on. Thank you. Go Great, for it, Tracy. thank you. There you go. Hey, would it be okay if I shared my screen? Yes. Thank you. All right. Are you able to see that? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> okay, great. So as, um, as Danny mentioned, um, this is a loan request by the Bicycle Collective. Um, um, this is located at 901 South Gale Street, one of the RDA's properties. Um, just a quick overview. Uh, again, this is located in the gra in the RDA's Granary District area. It's located across the street from the Fleet Block between along 900 South and between about 300 and 400 West. Um, as you can see here, this is uh, an empty lot. It's currently an empty lot. It's about a little bit bigger than a quarter acre um, property. 
Um, in terms of the project summary, again, the applicant is a bicycle collective. They are a nonprofit organization. Um, the project concept includes a 15,000 square foot multi-use building that will house the headquarters of the organization, and it will it will include the retail program and operation space. Um, again, this is a $1.75 million construction loan request. It, uh, they are requesting um, that the RDA be, um, at, at the RDA as the primary financer on the project. And if the financing is approved um, by the RDA board today, construction is anticipated to be completed by quarter one of 2023. Um, just to give um, a little bit of background on this project, in 2017, through an RFP process, the RDA selected the Bicycle Collective to no negotiate the development of the property. In 2018, the RDA board approved a land write down for the property in exchange for public benefits. Um, and the land will be conveyed to the Bicycle Collective once financing sources are secured. Um, and the public benefits included in this project include public amenities, transit alternatives, architecture and urban design, and sustainability. And all of that information can be found in, in the packet. Um, in terms of the overall uh, proposed terms for the project, um, again, it's a $1.75 million loan request. Um, and the, the project does qualify for a 2% loan interest rate reduction. So again, those four public benefits would equate to a 2% um, loan, uh, interest rate reduction. There would be a five-year term on the loan with a 20-year M, and the RDA would have a first position lien on the property. Um, here are some examples of renderings for the proposed uh, headquarters for the Bicycle Collective. Um, it, this here would be the nine line trail that would um, go along 900 South. Um, and in terms of con some considerations and next steps, the RDA Finance Committee did review this last week and they did provide a positive recommendation to the RDA board. Um, in terms of their loan repayment, um, their loan repayment will be solely based on the organization's ability to fundraise. Um, and the Bicycle Collective does anticipate additional fundraising once the building is under construction. Um, and as I noted in the last slide, the RDA will have a lien on the property that includes both the land and the improvements if they are unable to pay back the loan. Um, and the RDA board does make the final decision. Um, there is a resolution within your packet um, for your consideration. Um, at this time, I'm happy to answer any questions and I believe um, there are some Bicycle Collective um, uh, the development team is there um, to answer any questions, and they, I believe they also have a small presentation. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Thank you so much. Uh, board members, do you have questions about this of the applicant or of our staff? Madam Chair? Yeah, go ahead. So just to clarify, this is a, a loan that um, will be repaid. The repayment amount is based on the organization's ability to fundraise. Is there a forgiveness clause in the loan if the organization is unable to fundraise, or that's when the uh, lien on the property would kick in? Yes, so that is accurate. It is a $1.75 million loan request that will be paid back, back to us. There is not a forgivability clause or anything like that. So if they are, are unable to pay, um, the RDA would have a lien on the property. Um, uh, thanks, yeah, Tracy. Yeah, does that and answer your question? Yeah, at what point, uh, like how, given that there's not a specific amortization schedule, at what point does that lien kick in? Like how many years does the Bicycle Collective have to fundraise? And then I guess the question to the Bicycle Collective representatives is, are you confident that, you know, you'd be able to fundraise in that amount of time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it is a five-year term with a 20-year AM, so they would have to pay back the loan within five years of, I believe, it'll be once the construction is um, completed. Thank you, Tracy. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. oh, I don't see, okay, do again. And this is just the final loan on the property that's needed, 1.75, or that's all of it? Okay. That, that's our portion of the loan and their overall fundraising. For the project. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, I don't have any questions. So um, it looks like we need 
a resolution to a Yes. A motion to approve it is as, as Tracy as, indicated, representatives are here from Biso Collective with the presentation. If the board would like to hear from oh, them okay. or you can move to action. I'm, I'm not sure they would complain. Oh, I wasn't here in 2018, so I would like to hear more from the applicants. <laughs> <laughs> so come on in. And I we have a familiar face. <laughs> I believe Taylor has the presentation. All right. Um, Taylor, do you have the presentation? Um, yeah, Scott, will you get that pulled up, please? Go ahead and introduce yourself. Up. Good afternoon. My name is Donna Maturo McAleer, and I'm the executive director of the Bicycle Collective. And joining me today are Sean Murphy, our board chair, and Todd Reeder, the chair of our building committee. Um, we are absolutely thrilled to be here. We've been on this journey together since 2017, and we're truly anxious and excited to bring this project and amenity into the community. So the Bicycle Collective is a nonprofit, is a statewide nonprofit organization. And our mission is twofold. Um, if we can have the second slide, please. So we have both an environmental mission and a humanitarian mission. From an environmental perspective, it's to promote safe, sustainable, and affordable transportation throughout the community. In we also have a huge recycling component. We take donated bikes and we either repair them and sell them in our shop as alternatives to affordable for transportation. We repair them and we provide them to people in need throughout the community who don't have another means of independent or self-reliable transportation. And what we can't recycle, what we can't reuse and refurbish, we recycle. And last year alone, we recycled more than 5,700 tons of material that we kept out of Salt Lake City landfills and landfills throughout the state. Our humanitarian part of our mission is to help individuals in the community focusing on newly arrived refugees, individuals ex um, recovering from substance abuse, income eligible families, those experiencing housing insecurity, to give them a means of transportation that is affordable and easy to maintain. Next slide, please. So what do we do? We do a lot of different things at the Bicycle Collective. We sell affordable refurbished bicycles. We're like a value added thrift store. So everything you're coming in to get has been pre-owned, it's been fully tuned up and upcycled by our professional mechanics. We give away bikes free to people in need. In 2021, we provided 1,469 bikes to individuals throughout the state of Utah. We also have a do-it-yourself repair space, so anybody in the community can come in and work on the bike, their bike themselves, and they can learn how to work on a bike. In some of our shops, we offer professional service repair, so that's a fee for service, which will be a new revenue stream for Salt Lake. We teach bicycle mechanics through a variety of different classes focused on youth, f focused on anybody who wants to join um, and learn about bicycles. One of our award-winning programs is our Women Trans Fem Night that happens every Wednesday night for anybody who doesn't identify on a gender binary spectrum. And then lastly, we accept and recycle donated bicycles. Next slide, please. So this is a little bit of our community impact. This is just 2021. We like to showcase this to show what we're doing in the community. So you see the number of bikes we've given away. Um, these are also include COVID numbers. So our youth programming is down a little. That was 2021 as we weren't having people in shop. We sold almost 1,800 bikes to people throughout the state with an average cost of a bike being $236. Um, that's significantly less than if you go into a retail shop right now. Uh, we recycled more than 57 tons of material. That's 
aluminum, steel, and rubber. And 5,300 bikes were donated from people across the state. We have uh, 423 volunteers who donated last year just over 5,600 hours. Again, those numbers are COVID impacted. Um, in 2019, we had almost 19,000 volunteer hours. So a lot of people participating in this organization. Next slide, please. So this is the design of the new building. This is the highest functioning community bike shop in the country. There are collectives and cooperatives throughout this country. They all do something a little bit differently. Nobody has as encompassing a mission as we do, nor has anybody designed a building specifically designed to be a community asset. The beauty of this location in the property that you've graciously granted us is it's right there um, in the Central Ninth District, which as you all know is under complete a, a renaissance. The eight mile trail will be a bridge to east and west. It will go right in front of our shop. There is no other bike shop in this area. And so it'll also be a community gathering space. The really cool thing about this building and what's so important and imperative to us is it's designed to house and um, facilitate multiple programs simultaneously. And what do I mean by that? We can teach classes, community members can be working in the bike shop, our professional mechanics can be working on bikes and we can have people in shopping. We can't do that in our current space right now given how limited we are. We can only have one program at a time. Uh, we also uh, have a Blue Sky grant for there'll be a solar system on the top of this. Uh, next slide, please. This is uh, some renderings of the interior. Again, what you see starting on the lower left is basically a very large expansive retail space. Then on the lower right quadrant is our community bike shop. That's right on the corner of Gale and um, uh, right on the corner of 9th and 3rd. That will be open and it's an expandable area. Going up to the top right will be where we go with to our classrooms. Um, staircases designed to bring bikes up and down those staircases where we'll have youth programming. And then on the top left is the exterior of the building. Next slide, please. So this is the location that we're at. Again, great connection between east and west will really be a flagship building in the center of this district. Um, it's located, why this is paramount is we work with about 60 community partner organizations throughout the state to include the IRC, which is the International Rescue Committee, Catholic Community Services, Volunteers of America, Boys and Girls Club, to name a few just in the Salt Lake area, who we partner with. They identify the clients who need bicycles. They refer them to us and we provide those bicycles. This location makes um, it much more accessible for those partner organizations and their clients to come to us because we're just two blocks off a track station now. Um, we're immediately across from the fleet block and then, as you can see, there's a lot of housing units planned for that area. Um, as you all know, transportation and housing equity go together. Transportation is a formidable barrier to affordable housing, and we help to bridge that with that tool of a bicycle. The other great thing about bicycles is it promotes healthy lifestyles, just being outside. Um, it doesn't let out any fossil fuels or carbon emissions. So we, there's a lot of benefits um, ecologically and individually. Next slide, please. And this is what biking feels like every time you get on a bike, right? I mean, I think all of you can remember the first time you were on a bike. Maybe you haven't been in a bike on a bike in a while. There's a lot of different um, activities going on in Salt Lake. There's a lot of work being done to promote active transportation, and we're trying to contribute to that as well. So I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, 
Yeah, thank you for the presentation. Uh, before I ask my question, I way back a long time ago, before I was a council member, before I was on the planning commission, I was on the redevelopment advisory committee, and I was actually on the selection committee that ended up choosing the bicycle collective for this site. Um, and there were some great applications for that, but yours really stood out, and I'm really excited to have you as a community organization in the Central Ninth neighborhood, right on the Nine Line Trail. Uh, I think it's a, a perfect location and a perfect addition to our neighborhood. So, uh, and I've been waiting for you to start your building for a long time. We're, so I'm glad that you're getting. We're almost it. ready. We're almost ready. The only question I have is. Uh, the one that I kind of posed earlier, are, are you, do you feel confident in your fundraising to be able to repay this loan? And also, what, just out of curiosity, what percentage of the entire construction budget does our, the RDA loan represent? So um, I'm going to answer that all in one. So right to date, we've raised 62% of what is needed for construction, which is 2.6 million. Um, we are highly confident in our ability to continue to fundraise once this project gets started and is completed. It was kind of a perfect storm with the onset of the pandemic. We launched our public phase of the capital campaign in February 2020. Um, two and a half weeks later, pandemic hit, we all shut down. The onset of the pandemic, constrictions in the supply chain, building uh, material scarcity and increased construction volatility kind of created this perfect storm. We have continued to fundraise. Um, there are several large funders which are engaged in this project. Our cornerstone funder, funder is the Ray and Ty Norda Foundation. Um, the George S. and Dolores Story Eccles Foundation, uh, the Larry H. and Gail Miller Family Foundation, the Al Sam Foundation, um, I know the Sorensen Legacy Foundation. We've been fundraising for almost two and a half years, and I will tell you we are at a little bit of a inflection point, and I think I'm highly confident once people see progress on this, we're going to be able to complete that fundraising. We also have a public phase of this campaign going on where we're trying to raise a million dollars from 10,000 people throughout the community. Um, sounds like simple math, right? $100, $100 a donor, but getting that word out, I think when people finally start seeing the construction, um, that is gonna help us. Additionally, we're gonna be able to expand our operations from here and add a couple of new revenue streams, which again is also gonna enable us to continue to fundraise for new services that we will be providing. So we've raised 62% right now, so the remaining 38% is what the RDA loan covers right now. Great, well, um, I mean, uh, I think it's maybe obvious from my comments, but I'm supportive of this, uh, and I'm excited to see this project moving forward, and as the council member that represents your location, please let me know what I can do to help you in your outreach and fundraising. I will definitely take you up on that, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Council Member, uh, Board Member Pui. I want to remind uh, Board Member Mano that the lines haven't yet deci been decided. It's already um, it's already in my in my <laughs> lines, even before we change it. <laughs> I, we wouldn't mind two of you representing <laughs> us, you know. I um, you know I and I love what you do, um, and I've been following the organization for many years, and uh, I, and I I've seen the organization grow and do more, and it's beautiful. This place is a perfect place for it. I do have a few questions on your mission. You talk so much about you know equity, basically about you know helping uh, low-income families and uh, and the, uh, trying to solve some of those barriers for transportation. Do you guys track uh, you know the the racial diversity? on who are your clients are? So that's a great question. We just started doing that this year. Historically, we have not. We have uh, tracked adults and children with no, um, no demarcation around race, gender, orientation, ethnicity. However, we are starting to do that now as we see there are organizations that are really interested in understanding the different demographic groups we're reaching out to. I will share recently, um, a, a large portion of our clients are refugees. 
Um, we have provided bicycles to people from more than 62 different countries. Um, most recently, as, as I'm sure you all are aware of, we are starting to welcome um, Afghans as new Americans here in Salt Lake, and we've been providing those bikes. Interestingly enough, a little personal story. A gentleman came in a couple of weeks ago, and it was pretty obvious to me that he had been in the Afghan military, what he was wearing, and his English was, was quite strong, and we started talking. Well, long and the short of it is he served with a friend of mine over in Afghanistan. Um, talk about a small world. He was a colonel in the Afghan military and special forces helping our special forces soldier and General Scott Miller, who was the commander over there, who was a good friend of mine. Um, the gentleman now is here. He's here without his family on a temporary visa. He has a bike and he is now working at the Grand America Hotel. Um, and that bike is providing his transportation. He's come in to learn a few things. Um, so th those are the people we're seeing regularly. We had a family in last week from Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, I have, I have absolute, I mean, um, kind of gross numbers, but not individual breakdowns. After this year of our first year of data collection, we will have that. Uh, I mean, the, to me, that would be very important to, I mean, I support this, this loan, but I would love to see that publicized. I think that is very important. Also, uh, if I could suggest, you know, maybe you are already doing this, so, but Spanish classes will be something that you guys, I think it will be wonderful for my community. Uh, and what you guys do is, is life-changing and it's beautiful. Beautiful, and the nine line being built there could be an amazing connection between East West. Uh, and I want to see more people in in my district uh, or their manos district. Who knows what's going to happen? But uh, you know, uh, it's going to be my district. <laughs> yeah. By the way, to, to, to drive <laughs> so around. You're coming. Thank you. Come that, that far, Thank you. Way. My, it's a great my, idea. My um, comment, and uh, this is for probably, may, maybe this is one of your new revenue streams coming in, but one thing that Salt Lake City doesn't have, and especially this area, if you want to, you know, go along the Nine Trail or go to the Jordan River, there's really no place to go rent a bike. I don't own a bike, and if I could, you know, go around in, in a bike, I would, ha you know, happily be renting one from you if you had one. Um, and so if that's something that you're already thinking, great, but that's just a... Pitch. It's certainly a, an idea that we can look into pursuing. I mean, there is a, a ride share program and the scooters. Um, there's a high level of maintenance and required with that. We actually are beta testing that out of our Ogden location because the demand is a little smaller and we'd like to see kind of what happens with that this year, get some numbers on it to see if that makes sense. Um, one of the new revenue sources that we are pursuing is an accredited bike mechanic certification and workforce training. There's a high demand for mechanics in this state. And um, one sense I'm proud that REI comes to us to recruit mechanics, um, <laughs> but I don't really like letting them go, and they often end up they often end up coming back. Right now in the U.S., there's only two places you can go to become an accredited bike mechanic, and um, one is in Colorado and one is in Washington or Oregon, and we're looking at offering that training here as part of workforce services training as well. That would be great. That would be. Yeah, we should be the third location for that. Anyway, I don't have any other questions. Do you? Are we good? Okay, so we need a motion for this. Who's going to do it? Madam Chair, I move that we approve the uh, loan to the bicycle collection loan. Second. All right, I have a motion by um, Board Member Dugan, seconded by Board Member Wharton. Any discussion? Oh, no? Okay, I'm going to roll call. Fowler? Yes. Uh, yes. Wharton? Yes. Hui? Yes. Mano? Yes. Dugan? Yes. Petro? Yes. And I'm a yes. I think Petro was a yes. I, I don't see, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't see uh, Cindy looking at me. So that passes. So congratulations. Excited to see it. All right. We're going to be getting back to you with the breaking ground date soon. And I hope to see everybody there. Yeah, we'll um, be there. So thank you very much. We, we are really excited about this opportunity and to continue this partnership and expand our reach throughout the city, the county, and the state. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. 
All right, we're moving on to item three, and um, Vice Chair Pui will take over for this item. I need to recuse myself um, because of, I don't know. What. You could clarify that your um, business overlaps with some of the businesses okay. involved in this, not that you're necessarily personally profiting from this business, but just out of an abundance of caution, that's what you've okay. let us know. So out of an abundance of caution, because my businesses interlap with this company, not for this project, I will recuse myself. So, Chair yeah. we So we are on item C3, the resolution for the loan amendment for West End LLC. The board will receive a briefing about and consider adopting a resolution that will amend the existing loan terms, the term sheet for West End LLC for the adaptive reuse for two warehouses located approximately 740 West and 100 South. The applicant is requesting to extend their loan through the RDA loan program for an additional, additional five years. At the table, Danny Waltz, RDA CEO, Tracy Tran, RDA project manager, I guess it's on the screen, uh, and Kate uh, Werrett, uh, RDA pro project manager. Great, thank you very much. Um, Taylor, I have a presentation if you wouldn't mind pulling it up. Um, as was mentioned, this is a request for a loan term amendment. Um, West End Development, if you wanna go to the next screen. They have done an adaptive reuse project within the nine-line CRA project area. It was the first project within this project area to receive funding. If you want to go ahead and go to the next slide. So the developer is West, uh, West End LLC. Um, in 2019, the, the RDA board first approved a primary loan in the amount of $3.1 million to finance the construction of this, pro of this re adaptive reuse project. Um, the total project cost was about $4.2 million. So we are the, the main um, financier for, for this particular project. They had anticipated before COVID hit that that construction would take them about nine months and that they'd be able to lease up the building um, by early 2021. Unfortunately, with the economic um, issues that were caused by the pandemic, that slowed down their construction um, time and their leasing up of the building. And so they have had uh, no income, rental income come in yet, and it's reduced the rates that they are anticipating that they will be able to achieve for, for their, their different warehouses. If you want to go to the next slide. So that, that is why they are looking for this extension. Um, what you can see here on the left, those are the pictures of what it looked like before. And on the right, those are the after pictures. You can see they had quite a bit of land mitigation to get rid of um, the issues that were on the site before. Um, this project in particular really aligns with the goals that were in place for the nine line project area. And those include neighborhood revitalization. Um, this allows for pedestrian activity in the area. Um, it, this is a, considered a, a catalytic project for the area as it was the first one to receive financing. Um, it is an adaptive reuse, which was also a goal for the area. Um, it, it creates a commercial node and a corridor, and then it will provide neighborhood services. If we want to go ahead and go to the next slide. What we see here, oh, there we go. So here are our proposed terms. The amount remains the same. There will be no changes there. Um, Within the RDA loan program policy, there is a requirement that if an extension occurs after five years, that the interest rate increases by 2%. So for years one through five, which is what their current approved term is, it would remain at what has been approved by the RDA board already at that 0.46%. However, um, at the end of that, in that five-year term, it would increase to 2.46%. Um, this is a allowed and, and required that interest increase um, by, by the policy that is in place. Um, those, those are the only two changes that will occur with this amendment that the applicant is requesting the extension and then that 2% increase. 
If you want to go ahead and go to the next slide. The RDA Finance Committee reviewed this and recommended approval to the board. So um, they had no, no qualms with it and they present it to you for your, your final decision. There is a resolution that goes along with this that you will need to approve as well. It is within your packets. Um, we do have a member of the development um, committee, or excuse me, the development group that is online if you, and is happy to answer any questions if you have any, and I also am willing to answer any questions. And with that, I'll turn it over to you to make a decision or make any comments. Thank you. Board members, any questions? Uh, Mr. Chair, so just to put it in terms that I understand, we have an existing $3.1 million loan at a rate of 0.46%, and that was a five-year five payoff, a balloon payment at five years, I assume. Yes. But because of problems with the lease up and whatever else, uh, the we're not putting out any additional money, we're just giving them an additional five years to repay that at a, and from years five to 10, it would be a 2.46 interest rate. Correct, okay. yes, the, the policy requires a pre-authorized extension, so we, they can't wait till the end of their five year term to request it, and so that's why they're requesting it now. Yes. Okay, great. I, I do have a question unless someone else, yes, go, go ahead. I uh, just look at the uh, pictures. Where are we on the construction? I mean, it seemed I couldn't tell if we were ninety percent there or fifty. So they have finished it. All that is needed is tenant improvements. Um, they don't have any tenants quite yet, so, but the exterior, the shell of the building, is complete as well as the mitigation. Okay, yeah. and the other part of the loan, the other four, the other one point one million, has that already been paid off? as far as a loan, because that was the original loan, original requirement was 4.2 So the total. the total cost of the project was 4.2. Um, the developer brought some of that to the table. The RDA only supplied 3.1 okay. million. And that is what, they have begun paying it off, but that's what the term extension request is for. I can't remember if I, when do you think you'd have people moving in? Or did, I, I believe Max would have a better Okay. response to that yeah, probably. but I, I do understand that they have a letter of interest from a potential tenant thank you I, if you want me to speak I'm happy to answer that question or I, I can do it later I don't know if you can hear me yes we can hear it, is this the, do, you, do you want me to answer the question now yes please um, yeah, we we are we have been. I, I think as as Kay was mentioning, we we've been, you know, talking. Obviously, we've been listing this for a while now. Uh, construction, you know, was complete at the end of last year. Um, you know, given sort of the challenges from COVID, in particular, we're we're trying to lease to businesses that sort of like work with the theme of activating the alley and creating you know, a sort of a destination for some of the community. Um, we're particularly targeting coffee shops, roasteries, restaurants, um, you know, um, potential uh, breweries. Uh, we do have a letter of intent uh, signed with a potential cidery. Um, they are, you know, talking about potentially, you know, we're negotiating a lease with them in, at the moment. So, you know, my hope is, is that we actually get to sort of a signing in the next couple weeks to month. Obviously, there's DABC involved. They have to get, you know, uh, a liquor license. So that's also part of the equation. But um, we hope that at least one of the buildings will be leased up um, fairly soon. We're also talking to a potential tenant on the north building. Um, it's a potential bakery that, that does pies and other things. They've been at the you know farmer's market for a long time and they're looking for a location. And again, with them, we're having high level discussions about whether that will work for them, but we don't have anything signed or on paper yet. I, I hope that answers your question. Any other questions, board members? Okay, I'm looking for a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the loan amendment. Second. Okay, I have a motion by uh, board member uh, Mano and uh, second by board member Fowler. 
Um, I'm going to call the question now. Uh, board member Fowler? Yes. Warden? Yes. Mano? Yes. Dugan? Yes. Petro? Yes. And I'm a yes. Motion the motion passes. Okay, so we are back with your chair <laughs> on item number four. So report and announcements from the executive director. And I don't see the mayor. Um, do you have anything, Rachel? <laughs> All right, thank you. And then number five, report and announcements from RDA staff. And here's Danny. Thank you, with Madam us. Chair. I have a few items to go through. Uh, I'll be quick. Uh, first and foremost, two upcoming events to make the board aware of. Uh, next Wednesday at 1.30 is the Folsom Trail opening event. Uh, I believe some of you may already know that. That's an event being led by UTA along with Salt Lake City as stakeholders. Uh, for the board's awareness, the RDA contributed 348000 to this phase of the project to help fund lighting and seating along the trail. Uh, second item is the Obon Festival. Director Mono, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, which is scheduled right now. <laughs> which is scheduled right now for Saturday, uh, July 9th. Uh, the time is to be determined, but the RDA will be sharing a booth with the architects, GSBS, who helped uh, doing the design uh, strategy for Japantown. So we will be there providing information and answering questions. Uh, two quick updates on specific projects. We have uh, successfully closed on the acquisition of property from ArtSpace to complete part of our assemblage within the station center project. This was, if the board remembers, just under a half acre parcel that kind of bisected two of the agency's parcels right now. So this completes the assemblage into something that's just uh, about a one and a quarter acres. So this will now be included as part of the larger station center uh, project moving forward. We do have an ongoing obligation to relocate a storm drain system that was part of ArtSpace's property. So we will follow through on that. But that is an assemblage that we have uh, completed the acquisition on now. Uh, the Schmidt Apartments project that was approved as part of the 2021 NOFA unfortunately will not be moving forward. They have not been able to put together the rest of their capital stack or the project. So that was a loan that was approved for $1.1 million uh, that was originally appropriated for that project. That money will now fall into the larger bucket for NOFA, uh, will be available for loans that come to us on an emergency basis. Uh, and our staff uh, following direction and comments from the board, we are working on parameters of how to kind of clarify those guidelines as we move forward and anticipate getting requests throughout the year. What was the address of the, sh of the show? Oh, I can't remember the exact address. Do you remember? Oh, I think. I'm oh. looking to Tracy or Lauren. All right. They can jump in. We can get that. I'm sorry. We do. Third okay. West and Thanks, 1300 sorry. South was the address. Gotcha. Thanks. <laughs> So those are the two updates on that. And then finally, I uh, wanted to thank uh, Madam Chair, uh, you and Director Mono for attending the ribbon cutting for the Capital Homes of Projects at 1749 South State recently. Uh, this was a project that the agency contributed $3.2 million in acquisition and construction loans. Uh, this provides 62 affordable units ranging from one to three bedroom, uh, adding to the city's housing stock. Uh, that's a project we did in conjunction with the Housing Authority as a partner. We also had former board members, Derek Kitchen and Charlie Luke there, so that was neat to see. Um, but wanted to make this announcement, I think it's very appropriate to make it Today, when the two items on our agenda were basically term sheets for the board's consideration and approval, uh, which is a testament to the creativity of what we do uh, as an agency to provide for projects. And wanted to thank uh, RDA staff members, previous member Tammy Hunsaker, as well as Tracy Tran, who worked on the project and bring it to fruition. Want to thank Katie Lewis, who I always like to state was a former RDA attorney, but who uh, as a city attorney does an amazing job. I want to thank her and her team of Allison, Kimberly, and Sarah, who really help us pull these creative loans together. But more importantly, wanted to thank both the board and the mayor for their support, because just like today, you see these projects very early on as term sheets and conditions, and it was great to see this project finally in its finished form come to completion and now contribute to the housing stock. So. What you see today when we just talk about terms is kind of neat to now finally see it play out. So we hope to have more of these, but wanted to make sure that we recognize the board for your support in that. So thank you very much. Oh, thank That's you. That's all we Danny. have, Madam Chair. 
Thank you. That that's an amazing project. We loved it with Darren and and Senator Anderegg was there too. I mean, it was a big deal. As uh, if, if people remember what it used to be and what it is now, please go see it on State Street. It's an amazing project. I mean, it's everything we as planners and also as elected officials would you know would like to see in streets like that. So congratulations to everybody that was in, that, that was involved. Um, and hopefully we can make many, you know we can do many more of these ones. Yeah, go ahead. But just, um, it looked like a great event, and I'm sorry I couldn't be there. Um, I did drive by, though, recently, and it looks amazing. But I thought we talked about saving the old sign. Is that still maybe happening? For Capitol or yeah. over NIDER? No, I thought we were going to do it for the Capitol one, too. I honestly don't remember that, but we can follow up on that with I, Housing Authority to see I think was. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we, I remember having that discussion, but... Not to take away from the project, still love it. <laughs> no, I, I, I had forgot about that. I do remember that conversation, so we can follow up on that. Okay, cool, great. Thank Thanks. you. Well, thank you. Um, so then we have written briefings, and I think, do we have anything, Jen, from, okay. So I think we are adjourned. Yeah, if we're not, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, we're adjourned. Our motion to adjourn. I forget these things. Move or adjournment. Second. Okay. Motion to adjourn by Board Member Mano. Second by Pui. Roll call. Petro. Yes. Dugan. Yes. Mano. Yes. Pui. Yes. Wharton. Fowler. Yes. And I'm a yes. So we are adjourned. As the, as the Board of the RDA. As the Board of the RDA. And now we're moving on to uh, City well, Council. And we'll, Mr. Uh, Chair. After our seat move and everything else, we'll adjourn or uh, convene at uh, 3.05.